I am Shannon Land, a Regional Sales Manager with Macroy Manufacturing. I am here today to demonstrate the proper use of a number 26 Pitbull Fusion Machine with 3 inch IPS pipe. High density polyethylene pipe is one of the most versatile pipe materials on the market and I am going to show you just how easily it can be fused together. I will be fusing in accordance with the standards outlined in the ASTM F2620. This is the widely accepted standard for fusing polyethylene pipe in the U.S. There are other standards that are used throughout the world. Please be sure you understand the parameters required in your area before you begin fusing pipe. Before you begin, take a look at the machine you will be using and make sure it is in proper working order and is as clean as possible. This is also a good time to ensure that you are using the correct size of inserts for the pipe you will be fusing. Ensure that both ends of the pipe to be fused are clean. The best material to use for cleaning the pipe is a clean, dry, lint-free cloth. Ensure all possible contamination is cleared from the fusion area of the pipe, both inside and out. With the pipe as level as possible, feed it into the jaws with about a finger's width extending inside the jaws. A finger's width will allow enough material to be properly faced off. Once the pipe is set into position, use the clamp knobs to tighten the jaw around the pipe. There is no need to use a wrench. Just snug it up using your hands. The applied pressure is meant to hold the pipe securely with the aid of the serrated inserts. Now place the facer correctly into the machine, placing the guide rod brackets over the guide rods. Ensure that the latch is locked into place and begin the facing procedure. Ensure the pipe ends are not making contact with the facer. Turn the facer on and bring the pipe ends against the facer with minimal pressure. Apply only enough pressure to allow the blades to shave ribbons and material from the pipe. If the facer begins to struggle, apply less force. Face all the way to the mechanical stops. This is until the jaws come in contact with the stops on the facer. With the jaws still against the stops, turn off the facer. Once the blades have stopped spinning, you may open the carriage and remove the facer. Now inspect the pipe ends to ensure at least a full ribbon of material has been removed. This will prove that the exposed material is as clean as possible and that when the pipe ends are brought together, it will be a flush, uniform fit. If a good face-off has been accomplished, bring both ends of the pipe together to check for proper alignment. Use a slim instrument, I like to use a pin, and run it against the seam of the pipe. If the alignment is not off more than 10% of the wall thickness, continue. If it is, realign using the clamp knobs and reface. Also, bring the pipe ends together to check that they are clamped firmly enough to prevent any slippage of the pipe in the jaws. If the pipe slips, reinstall the pipe with a little more clamping pressure and start the facing process over again. It is just about time to heat our pipe, but before we can do that, we must make sure that our fusion area is clean. Wipe away any debris from the jaws and pipe using the same type of towel as before. Be sure not to touch the face of the pipe, as it is freshly faced and as clean as it can be. Now wipe down both sides of the heater using a fresh, clean, dry, lint-free towel. Now that the heater is clean, you need to get a temperature reading from each side. There is a built-in thermometer, but this is in place only to get an internal reading. So, using a parameter, check each side where the pipe will come in contact with the heater. ASTM F2620 states that a heater should be in a temperature range of 400 to 450 degrees Fahrenheit to butt fuse. With the heater at proper temperature, place it in the carriage using the guide rod brackets with a stripper bar over the jaws. To begin the heat soak, bring the pipe ends against the heater and ensure the entire circumference of the pipe is in contact. Now apply just enough force to keep the pipe against the heater. At this point, the locking cam can be engaged. Now with the pipe and the heat soak, it is important that no pressure is applied between the pipe and the heater. Just keep the pipe in contact with the heater. Any pressure will cause the heat to not properly penetrate the pipe. The heat soak will be complete when a minimum bead size of 1 16th of an inch is observed. This is the minimum bead size as specified in ASTM F2620. Please refer to this publication for other pipe sizes. Once the minimum bead size has been confirmed, open the carriage, allowing the stripper bar to come in contact with the jaws. The heater needs to be removed without disturbing the molten material. With the heater now removed, make a close but quick inspection of the pipe ends to ensure a proper melt. Just be sure that from the time the heater is removed to the point that the carriage is in the closed position is within 8 seconds. This 26 machine has a 14 to 1 mechanical advantage, so excessive force is not required to make the fusion. Just apply enough to roll the bead over. The visual indications of a good melt 
are a flat and smooth surface with no unmelted areas. If a concave, unsmooth, or partially unmelted surface is noticed, or if any of the material is stuck to the heater, something has gone wrong during the heat soak and the fusion process must stop. As you are completing the visual check, begin closing the carriage. Once contact of the pipe ends have been made, continue applying force until the bead rolls back and is touching the pipe on both sides of the joint. Continue to apply manual pressure on the handle for 10 to 15 seconds before engaging the cam lock and releasing the handle. The joint is now in the cooling process and it is just a matter of waiting the appropriate time before removing the pipe. ASTM specifies a cool time of 11 minutes per inch of pipe wall. Cool time is the wall thickness in inches times 11 minutes. To figure out the wall thickness, we will take the outer diameter of the pipe and divide it by the dimension ratio, or DR. You can look up the outer diameter dimensions of most pipe sizes in the back of our catalog. Our pipe is 3 inch IPS DR 13.5, which is an outer diameter of 3.5 inches. So we will take 3.5 inches and divide it by 13.5, which gives us a wall thickness of 0.26 inches. To calculate our cool time, we will take the wall thickness of 0.26 inches and multiply it by 11 minutes. The cool time for 3 inch IPS DR 13.5 pipe will be 2.86 minutes, which works out to be 2 minutes and 52 seconds. Once the cooling cycle has completed, disengage the locking cam, loosen the clamp knobs and open the jaws, open the carriage and remove the pipe. Now we have one last step, inspecting the joint. A good joint will have a good double rollback bead with a uniform appearance on each side and the bead will have rolled back touching the pipe. Check for any debris or pitting in the joint. If all is well, move on to the next joint. A thorough visual inspection of the fusion will catch many of the potential problems. Here is what we are looking for. This fusion is unacceptable as the bead is not uniform around the circumference of the pipe. This fusion does not have a complete double rollback bead. This bead has contamination in it. This fusion is obviously not straight. This means that the pipe ends were not aligned correctly. So as you can see, the fusion process is pretty easy and goes quickly. A proper fusion joint will be as strong or stronger than the pipe itself. It is key that you follow the steps outlined in this video to ensure your fusion is made to standard.